What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I'm back with another Soprano Log, Season 2, Episode 5, Big Girls Don't Cry. Um, and this episode happens to be the first one written by Terry Winter. Um, he was one of the writers on The Sopranos starting in the second season, um, and he went on to go create Boardwalk Empire, another really great show. And he's a really great writer, which we can see in this episode. Um, so there's two main storylines going on. Uh, the first is that Furio has come over to America to work for Tony. Tony gets Artie to hire him uh, to make cheese at Vesuvio. Um, it's kind of a way for him to just kind of get through immigration and have a job here in America. Tony throws a party for Furio at his house. Furio actually references um, that he saw Two Women on AMC, uh, which is an Italian movie. It stars Sophia Loren, really great actress. Um, she was in uh, The Fall of the Roman Empire, which I did a video about. Um, you should check that out if you're interested in Roman history. But a really, really well-acclaimed movie. Um, it has to deal with Italy during the war. There's some very controversial scenes during that film. Um, and he references that that they play here in America, which apparently they, they don't in Italy. So Tony has Furio uh, start working. He sends him to go collect money from this guy who runs a whorehouse. He's been late on his payments. He gave Chris some excuses earlier in the episode. And he sends Furio in there to just beat the shit out of him and his wife. Um, really great scene. It's all done in one take. Furio just storms into the place and starts beating people up and, and just shooting the guy in the leg. Um, and we can see just right off the bat that Furio is a serious guy and he's a serious threat. Um, so you don't want to mess with him. With Furio here in America, um, Tony wants to take a step back. He wants to um, distance himself from criminal activities uh, because he's worried about uh, the FBI arresting him and getting in trouble. Um, so he promotes Paulie and Silvio to basically be his um, you know, underbosses. All the orders are going to go through those two. And notably, Pussy is excluded from this um, position. Tony doesn't really trust him right now. Um, and he gets passed over. Uh, so Pussy feels really marginalized by this. He's complaining to his handler about, you know, Tony not really showing him respect. And we can see that uh, Pussy is leaning more and more towards the FBI and developing that bond there rather than with his mob associates. So Tony hears that Janice has taken out a loan on their mother's house. Uh, this really upsets Tony. He destroys the phone when he hears it. Um, he goes over there to confront Janice and finds that Richie's there. They they had slept together and they're 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 starting to rekindle their relationship. And Tony's really infuriated by this because uh, one, he's mad at Richie for you know hurting Beansy when he told him not to, and then he can just see there's there's going to be a lot more trouble uh, with Richie and Janice together for him. Um, and Tony starts to to recognize that he's going through emotional problems. He doesn't have the therapy to really help him out anymore. Uh, he tries talking to Hesh about what he's going through. Hesh reveals that his father also had panic attacks, so we can see that it's a hereditary thing. And later on, we would see that also with AJ. So it's kind of the soprano curse. It's in their bloodline. Um, but Hesh is not really a good listener. He doesn't really want to listen to Tony's problems. Um, and Tony just, he's trying to talk to someone because he doesn't have therapy as an option. Meanwhile, Melfi is feeling really guilty about abandoning Tony. Um, she's talking to her psychiatrist about wanting to accept Tony as a patient again. Um, he thinks it's not healthy for her. He realizes that Melfi is getting a vicarious thrill from treating a mobster. And that's just not a good thing for the therapist to feel for the patient. But she calls Tony and invites him back to therapy. He agrees to go and... You know, they're back in therapy again. They're, they're, they're back at it. And um, yeah, I'm glad because I really like uh, Melfi and Tony scenes. They're awesome. So that's the first main storyline going on. The second is with Christopher. Um, he's attending acting classes. Adriana bought him these classes um, because it's geared for writers. Um, and Christopher has been struggling with becoming a screenwriter. Um, so he goes to these classes um, and tries to learn acting. He's having trouble with the scenes that are given to him. He really wants to do like, you know, mob scenes and like tough guy scenes. He doesn't really want to do this like deep emotional acting. The teacher kind of pushes him to do the scene and challenge himself and, and to really open up because that's what acting is all about is being truthful. Chris does a scene from Rebel Without a Cause. 
he starts crying um, to his dad, who's played by another guy. And, you know, it's it's a really great scene. He, he does it really well. He opens up, starts actually crying. Um, but he's kind of ashamed of this. He doesn't want to, like, open up and, and be emotional. And, in fact, the next day he goes and beats up the guy who played his dad just because all this acting has um, uncovered some, uh, you know, emotional issues that he has and he's not ready to deal with. Um, so he he doesn't make it through the class and at the end of the episode he takes all of his screenwriting stuff and he just tosses it uh, so we can see that he's uh, getting fed up with the writing and is not ready to be emotionally honest about who he is and what he wants Uh, so really interesting episode I can't help but feel that um, the screenwriting stuff uh, probably comes from Terry Winter himself um, and his experiences as a screenwriter But it's a really interesting episode and uh, can't wait to do the next Soprano log coming soon.